Let's make up a person. It'll be a man named Frankel. If the things that Frankel says can consistently be used against groups of people as a whole, even though he claims that he has nothing against those groups of people, and he is reminded by others on a regular basis that his words are being used against those groups of people, but he continues to say the same things that regularly get used as a weapon by those who spew hatred towards those groups of people, then why is it wrong to label him as being against those groups of people? Because he said so? Because he says he has friends that belong to one of those groups of people? Because he likes having sex with those groups of people? Those things are not proof in any way that he doesn't have a problem with those groups of people. If he knows that his words are being used that way, and he knows that those who are using them that way are highly bigoted against certain groups of people, and he doesn't spend any effort at all to sift out and weed out the crap from his followers, he doesn't call those people out on any sort of regular basis, then how in the world can he expect any sort of level-headed person to declare that Frankel doesn't have a problem with the groups of people that his words can and will be used as an excruciatingly powerful weapon against? Seriously, unless he has actually done something to prove that he supports those groups of people, unless he has at least stuck up for those groups once in a blue moon, then why is it wrong to label him as being against those groups of people? And yes, I've worded it this way to be as generic as possible, because I had a run-in recently with someone who refused to talk about the general subject of people who are bigoted, who hold double standards, unless I gave irrefutable proof that specific people are bigoted to begin with, ratcheting up the requirements for what is considered proof the more proof I gave. I wasn't having it. I'm not going to have a discussion about whether specific people technically are bigoted or not. It's far too subjective to make definitive statements about. When there's a general consensus that something is bigoted, that's the context I'm hoping to discuss things in. When we start getting into discussions about whether specific people are technically this or technically that, there is a very good chance, like a 99% probability, that the discussion can really have only one way of ending if people are being honest in the context of this technical stuff, and that is that the person or people that are being referred to are not the label that is given to them. Because that's when an argument of infinite regress comes into place, and I have no interest in that kind of crap. In fact, I outright refuse to have that kind of argument. Once we start getting into, well, technically, someone could easily prove that Rush Limbaugh isn't sexist, that white nationalists aren't racist, that the KKK isn't actually racist, and could even be used to prove that Hitler technically didn't hate the Jews. I have absolutely no interest in that in any way, shape, or form. And of course, once you've proven that no, technically they're not whatever the label is, you can then state that the entire premise of the discussion is invalid, call the person stupid that you're discussing things with, and then you can declare victory in a discussion that wasn't supposed to be a formal debate to begin with. That's how dishonest people have discussions, and I will not give people like that a chance. I've learned the hard way. There's no point. I've learned the hard way over and over again. There is no point. These are people who, if you're talking about colors and how colors affect one's environment and the way they feel, will stop the discussion in its tracks if someone mentions sky blue and proceed to demand a debate about the sky being blue and will ask for irrefutable proof that the sky is blue, even though that can't be given because technically the sky isn't actually blue. And if they get the person to admit that the sky isn't really blue, then they can declare that the entire subject of how colors affect one's environment and the way that they feel is completely invalid. Yeah, sorry, I will stop that shit in its tracks. And I don't care how many names you call me as a result. I mean, it may fluster me, I may get angry with you, but I'm simply not going to change my views based on your name-calling. Now, if you ask me for more information about what kind of mindset I mean when talking about one of those subjects, then I'll be glad to go further into detail. But I'm not going to take any time to prove that someone in particular is actually bigoted, because most of the time, that's subjective. So to get back to the subject, If the things that Frankel says can consistently be used against groups of people as a whole, even though he claims that he has nothing against those groups of people, and he is reminded by others on a regular basis that his words are being used against those groups of people, but he continues to say the same things that regularly get used as a weapon by those who spew hatred towards those groups of people, 
then why is it wrong to label him as being against those groups of people? If you start your retort with, well, technically, you need to prove that he is bigoted or you can't even remotely suggest that he's bigoted, no matter what other factors come into this, then I won't be offering you a discussion about that in that way, and you can drone on about it all you want to yourself or with other commenters, because I have no intention of proving that the sky is blue, of proving that Rush Limbaugh is sexist, of proving that glass can be broken even though it's a liquid, of proving that the KKK is racist, of proving that an image moved across my computer monitor, of proving that Hitler hated the Jews, or of proving that anarcho-capitalists don't really care about poor people. Sorry, those are not debates I have any intention of having. If those are the kind of debates you want, find somewhere other than my channel to have them. I'm not into intellectual masturbation. I mean, you know, congratulations that you can prove that things aren't really thermally cold and that coldness is an invalid concept because the only valid way to discuss it is in the context of things having a lack of heat. Because, you know, this room has a lack of heat right now and I'm really lack of heaty. Oh, but now let's have a discussion about whether the word heady is proper to use and how uneducated I am for using it. Because we can't possibly talk about social things that relate to temperature, like skiing and ice skating, unless we first prove that the concept of cold exists. Because, you know, technically... Yeah, keep that shit to yourself on my channel. I won't take part in any of it. Have a nice day.